Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how to land your first job as a software developer or really these tips apply to any technical role. As someone who has been there with self-teaching myself code to going to a coding bootcamp to looking for my first software developer role, I remember these feelings of being very overwhelmed and looking at resumes and being like, okay, for a junior developer, they want five years experience, 10 years of this programming language that's never even been around that long and so much more. And it can be very defeating or feel very overwhelming. So today I wanna to talk to you about some tips that I wish I knew when I was looking for my first software developer role. Before we go any further though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Also, as always, shout out to some of these wonderful subscribers here. I see you, thank you for your support, your questions, your comments. I just really appreciate uh, you taking the time to interact with me on YouTube. I love, uh, I try anyways and get back to every single comment, so thank you for that. Okay, let's get started. The first tip I want to share with you is to depuff or declutter your resume. And what I mean by that is it's so easy when you start the job hunting process and you're looking online, you see these job postings and they have, uh, you know, no 20 programming languages, 10 different frameworks, etc. There's so much packed into this job posting. And typically, not always, but typically, it's not because they expect you to know all of those uh, programming languages or different technologies. They're trying to hit a wide range of technologies that people might be familiar with and hope that if you have experience in some of them, you will still apply. And I think this is really important to note because at first when I saw this, I was someone who was like, oh my gosh, I need to put down every single programming language, every single framework or library that I've ever touched. And this might be for a to-do, for example, say uh, you have made a quick to-do list in Vue, but you have a ton of experience in React. Should you still put Vue on your resume? I think there's two ways to look at this. If the job posting is asking for specifically Vue, then put it on, but make sure to be clear too. Be clear in the sense that, you know, have Vue experience. I built a, small pro a few small projects with it. Um, but kind of highlight your experience level. I know some people on their resumes, they put different kind of bars or stars and out of five, say for example, view for experience, two out of five, react um, four out of five or things like that. But make it clear as to where your experience lies and really how much experience there is because there is nothing worth worse than going into an interview. They say, oh, I see you have a view experience and you're like, well, I made a little to-do app with it. And then it kind of looks almost, um, what's the word? Like you were quote unquote faking it and maybe it's because you were, but it doesn't bring that sense of trust to the potential employer. So right out the gate, be upfront and defluff your resume, meaning only put on what you actually know and what you actually can do. There is a second part to this though, which is very and equally as important. A lot of times when you are applying for jobs, the first round, the first process will be automated. So when you submit your resume, it's not an actual human that is reviewing it. So you need to make sure you are using keywords and don't completely alter your resume to use every keyword that is mentioned. But if there are keywords such as view or um, with different technologies that really keep on standing out in the job posting, make sure to add those to your resume. My next tip for you is to practice live coding until you feel comfortable doing it on the spot. When I was starting out, I was someone who really, uh, I remember one time, actually, I'll tell you a quick story. One time I got a job interview and it was for live coding, going in and doing a bit of live coding in front of a few of the developers at the company. And I was so nervous and so, so terrified that actually the morning of the interview, which I don't recommend you do this, but the morning of the interview, I called and canceled and I said, I'm not able to come in and you know, I, I will never be coming in because I was so embarrassed. So make sure leading up to the interview process that you have experience live coding. And your question is probably, well, Tiff, how do I get experience live coding before an interview? My answer is start speaking out when you are making small projects. So for example, go back to basics, make a simple to do app, but actually speak out as you are uh, coding the project. So, okay, I chose to do this to do app in React and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z because of this, etc. 
and it will feel weird at first and you'll really realize just how difficult it can be to actually walk through uh, your code, like speak about it as you are typing. And then of course that's elevated at the actual interview, but the more you practice it, even if you have a family member or friend that you're like, you have to sit down for the next 10 minutes and let, listen to me, you'll understand nothing that I'm saying, or if you have a developer friend, even better. But uh, just trying to um, share, get, be comfortable with uh, speaking out loud and talking about what your code is doing and why are you making the decisions you are with your code. The third tip I want to talk about is build your own portfolio. And this might seem obvious to some of you and others. You're like, why would I do that? It just houses all my projects. I just use GitHub. And that's fine too. But if you are a junior or someone who's really just starting out, you want to be able to show your skills as in as many ways as possible. And a great way to do that is through building your own portfolio. This can be a very simple portfolio with you know the about page, the projects, links to your GitHub, maybe your social media if you choose, your LinkedIn, any of the above. But by building your own portfolio, treat it as a project in itself. So when you go into the interview, they will know that you built your own portfolio. You can talk about it as an own, as its own project. So you can even explain to them why you chose to put the projects on the front page, your belt there, be able to speak about it as well and show that you put some thought into it. Okay, the next tip is probably one that you haven't heard before uh, when preparing for a technical interview, and that is to work on your people skills. Now, let me explain. A lot of times, especially for technical interviews, we put so much focus and so much time preparing on the tech side of stuff that we forget to prepare and be ready for the personable questions, questions that seem super easy initially to answer, but when you're in an interview, it can, it can become very uh, overwhelming and then you leave the interview being like, why did I answer this the way I did? For example, when I was in an interview, they asked, tell me about yourself and where do I, where do you see yourself in five years? And I remember leaving that interview being like, why didn't I prepare for these questions? They're kind of cross across the board questions that everyone asks. And if you take even 10 or 15 minutes to really think about your answer before you get into the interview, it will have a much uh, clearer sense to the interviewer that you actually took some time and prepared for the personable, the uh, people skill side as well. And companies nowadays, it's they can't, you can hire an amazing developer junior, senior, otherwise, but if the people skills aren't there, they probably, most companies probably won't want you to be honest, because the job market is so competitive now that you can't solely rely on your technical skills to actually get a technical job. Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's some companies out there that would still hire you, but if you're a complete jerk or just don't even want to really um, work on your people skills that will really shine through and they can find someone another developer who has both the people skills and the technical skills so make sure to spend some time working on your people skills and even just going through the questions googling like you do tech questions uh, top 10 most popular you know personable skills or ask questions in an interview and just be prepared for those the next tip is to study, not only study your technical skills and have some of the basic algorithms down pat. Um, I know Leak Code has a ton of uh, algorithms that you can practice on. Honestly, I use, what was it? I think I mentioned this in another video. I used Udemy. They have some great courses for algorithms and then also to free Code Camp. It's a free, completely free site and they have really great, uh, or they did when I did it about two or three years ago, they had great, so you have to check if they still do, but they have great uh, algorithms, like basic kind of uh, junior algorithms that you need to solve. And they explain to you the solution as well if you have trouble with it. So go check that resource out as well. But make sure to study and uh, not only the technical side of things, but also too about the company. No, you don't need to know every single detail about the company, but when you go in there, make sure you know who their CEO is, when they were founded, what is some of their main principles? What is some projects they've recently been working on, products they've released recently, or any kind of big updates that have happened recent for them. Even if it doesn't come up, say, in the interview, tell me what you know about our company, you can really start adding kind of tidbits of information into your answers and including the information you learned about their company. So, for example, um, if you got asked, where do you see yourself in the next five years and you do see yourself at the company you're interviewing at, you could say, 
give your answer, but then also add in, I know you just launched this product. I'm really looking forward to working on it and seeing where we can revolutionize and continue to evolve it. And that shows them that you really took the time out of your day to take interest and look up the company, look at what they're doing. And it just really puts another kind of like gold star or check mark next to your name. Okay, those are my main tips when you are looking for your first technical job or a software developer job. At the end of the day though, the most important tip I can give you, because I've been there, is to be persistent and consistent. It can feel sometimes like you apply to 100 jobs and no one even answers you, and sometimes that might be the case. At which point you need to look at, is this because of your skills or something you're doing, or is it just you know, like you're hearing good feedback, but no one's hiring right now. So really take uh, that into account as well. Thank you all for watching my video. I hope you find these tips really helpful. I know they are some that I wish I had when I was starting to do my job hunting process. And as someone who um, has been now on the hiring side of things, things I look for when I am hiring uh, junior developers or helping with that process by any means. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos, and I will see you all soon. Thanks everyone.